Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Roll the Dice with Dave. Thank you for joining us. Uh, if you're out there on Facebook Live, I appreciate you tuning in. If you're on YouTube, thank you so much for tuning in. Really appreciate it. Glad you could join us this evening. Have a great guest tonight. And I'm actually looking forward to this casual conversation as we're getting ready to head into the holidays. Uh, before I get into uh, the rest of the introduction of the show, just wanted to point out I heard this, and I don't know if any of you have heard this, but the Fresh Prince of Bel Air is going to be doing a reunion show on HBO Max on Thursday the 19th. I actually can't wait to check that out. Uh, I bring that up because as we head into the holidays, going to be plenty of chance to possibly binge watch some uh, Netflix, YouTube, uh, anything else out there that you really enjoy, uh, just in case you're not traveling. Also, if you're interested in being a guest on the show, please don't hesitate to reach out and email me at roll the dice with Dave uh, at gmail.com. Looking forward to having different topics and different guests on the show. Uh, let's talk about all different types of things. Doesn't necessarily have to be anything related to social justice or diversity. Tonight, we're just talking uh, about the holidays. We're talking about food. We're talking about drink. Uh, so we're actually going to have a good time tonight just getting everybody ready, moving into the holidays. But please go ahead and email me at roll the dice with Dave at gmail.com. Thank you all for those of you that have been supporting the show. I really do appreciate it. Um, can't do this uh, without you. So if you've been tuning in live, I appreciate it. If you've been checking us out on replays, I really appreciate that as well. So tonight we're about to get into it. We're going to be talking with Chef Jordan Walker. I'm actually going to bring him into the studio. So let me go ahead and get Jordan. Hey, Jordan, how's it going? You doing all right this night? Hey, how are you doing? I'm doing good, doing good. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. I really appreciate it. Um, can you please go ahead and just introduce yourself and tell everybody a little bit about yourself? Um, my name is Chef Jordan Walker. I reside in Charlotte, North Carolina. I am a multicultural private chef. I do a lot of different catering events for private events. I do teaching. And I'm just very versatile when it comes to the field. Thank you so much for that introduction. Uh, you did mention something and you said you're a multicultural chef. Can you actually explain a little bit what is a multicultural chef? So what that means is that I've studied different, I've worked at different places to actually study different cuisines. I've studied different cooking methods. Um, I've worked at a Latino restaurant so I have experience in Latino foods. Um, one of the biggest cultures that I have experience in is Japanese food, Asian foods. Like from that side of the world, I've studied um, cooking methods like underground from a nomad culture that was local in North Carolina. So I know how to cook. It's kind of called underground cooking. So I've just done a lot of different stuff. Um, American food, obviously, being that I'm from the South. Um, that's one of the big things. My grandma was a cook. Everybody in my family was a cook. So I've done different things with different cultures. Thank you so much for that explanation. Um, can you just tell the audience maybe a, a little interesting tidbit about you, something that maybe a lot of people don't know? Um. Something that everybody don't know about me. Um, I'm actually a lot of people find this shocking. I'm very nervous. Like I don't, I don't feel like I'm skilled when it comes to cooking on camera. But um, I actually had originally when I went to Livingstone, my original major was criminal justice with a minor in theater arts. So that's very interesting on how my journey. To actually become a chef, actually, it just flipped completely. Um, it's funny. You said you were a little nervous about cooking on camera, but I remember you were asked to do a cooking bit uh, on the news, and it was highlighted yeah. living from college did a thing. You didn't look nervous. You were actually killing it. Um, I actually showed that uh, to several people. I know I was like, hey, man, pay attention. I know this guy. He's going to end up being famous one day. So um, <laughs> you didn't look nervous at all, man. You were killing it that day. So uh, just a, a little bit more about you. Um, are there any chefs out there that you try to emulate or you just do you just do things your own way with your own style? Um, I like to do things my own way because, you know, with imitation, it comes with like, hey, um, you know, you you copy my style. And I've actually had it to where, you know, I, I actually like the chef and his style. 
And, you know, I wanted to try his style for a little bit, not for profit or anything, just to kind of try it and not reach out to him. I was like, hey, look, I think we should, you know, I made this. Um, I got the inspiration from you and it, it just, it really backfired. So I do have chefs that I reach out to and that I see as mentors. Um, Dr. Vivian Ray, who actually started the program at Livingstone, you know, she was one of the first chefs I actually had as a mentor. And then I was like, wow, this woman can really cook. Like she really has like this gift. Like she has a gift, like you can give her anything and she just turned it into this five-star meal. Um, Chef Darton, who actually taught most of my classes once I got into my actual classes in college, you know, she was like really a monumental part of my career. She actually shaped me into the chef that I am today. And then I have Miss Kimberly Brock, can't forget about her. She is the president of the ACF in my district. And I just really love, like, anytime I meet her, she's always inspirational. And she kind of is somewhat out of all those people, the chef that I am now, because she's an instructor, she's a teacher, she's just everything. Like, she's everywhere. And it's just such, it's wonderful actually having to personally know her because of how much people love her. Um, Daryl Scholler, who was the first Black MC, um, I remember I met him in 2017, ever since him and his apprentice, who was a, a phenomenal chef, um, Lionel Hughes, they are just amazing people. And I can't forget about Chef Jay-Z, who was actually my direct president for the ACF. Um, love, love, love talking to Chef Jay-Z. He is just one of the people that, you know, not only did he give me good, healthy cooking advice, he gives me life advice. It's just like, to him, I think looking at me, he looks, he's like looking into a mirror because when I first met him, I really didn't know what I wanted to do because, you know, when you see cooking and when you think of cooking, you mainly think of, hey, you know, I got to go find a job in the kitchen. I got to be an executive chef. You would never think it's just so much more to the cooking industry. You know, you can be an instructor. You can be a photographer. You can do culinary you can be in culinary mechanics that's a degree um just culinary de mechanics it just it's so interesting and i just appreciate all those people for being able to inspire me and just kind of show me hey there's more to culinary arts than you being in the kitchen if you don't like being in the kitchen jordan you don't have to be in the kitchen so i really like that i'm allowed to break different barriers in the food industry and bring it back to not only the generation before me, but the generation that's going to come after me. Man, I tell you what, thank you so much for that, that thoughtful answer. I really appreciate that. Um, I want to move on to the, the next question. Um, and, and this question is triggered from your you saying you were criminal justice, theater arts, and then you shifted into uh, culinary arts. When did you first realize you had this love for food and cooking? That came into play with, I came to Livingstone for a tour for criminal justice. And Dr. Ray basically was like, hey, why don't you look at the culinary arts program? And I was like, um, I want to be, I want to do, um, I don't think I want to do that. That's not nothing I really want to do. I want to be a police officer. I want to make a difference with the world. And she was like, well, I mean, there's nothing wrong with wanting to be a police officer and wanting to make a difference in the world, but where do you like how you plan on making a difference? I was just like, I want to be a police officer. So I was like, I, I, I don't know how I'm going to make a difference, but I know once I get there, I'll make a difference. She was like, okay, and you want to do criminal justice. I meant theater arts as well. And I was like, yes, like I'm going to make a difference. You know, I can, I'm, I'm going to be a spot. I'm, I'm going to be a um, detective. Like I'm going to go in, I'm going to graduate from college, be a detective. And that is not how any of that works. So being a detective is a minimum of 10 years on the force. That's like the bare minimum. So I was kind of discouraged. You know, I thought I was going to be like Olivia and Benson from Law and Order. So that, that was my that was my plan. That was, you know, had a cool shades and kick down doors and chase people. So 
I she was like, hey, so won't you go to the um NAB hood conference and just see? She was like, if you don't like it, I'll leave you alone. I'll pay for your um pay for the room and board, I pay for your meals, pay for you to get some suits. And I was just like, okay. So I go, I was like, I'm pretty sure I don't want to do food and whatnot. So once I actually, you know, I had been cooking. Um, I started out at a restaurant in my hometown called Newt's that I used to help out with occasionally. So once I seen what it was about, I kind of was just like, okay, so I could see myself cooking professionally. It's not what I thought it was. It's not as bad as I thought it was. So yeah, this is definitely something I see myself doing. So I got into the first year classes and I mean, I, I it, from there, it's, we're here. <laughs> yeah, that's a big jump, right? From one spot to the uh, yeah. to the next. So can you tell everybody a little bit about the school that you went to to get your culinary degree? Um, just kind of uh, explain your journey through that, that whole process. So Livingstone College. Um, I'm going to be honest. When I first got to Livingstone, I was really not the biggest fan. I was just like, no, this ain't the school for me. I don't want to, you know, I was just like, it, it was new. It was very different. Um, the high school that I went to, it kind of was like, hey, you know, the teachers really didn't know my name. I really, you know, just, I was kind of just a number there. So going to Livingstone, it was very different to have teachers that knew my name, that, you know, actually cared. Even when I had an issue with my financial aid and I had to leave Livingstone, um, it was definitely different. So, you know, I it was times in the very beginning, was like, I should have went somewhere like Johnson & Wales. But if I had to do it all over again, I would choose Livingstone every single time. And it's only not only, you know, a lot of people see it as, well, you went to a small school, you know, they don't have as much funding. Um, Livingstone really is how I became me. Livingstone, you know, I spent my most of my 20s at Livingstone. So Livingstone really developed me into the phenomenal chef that I am today. I had great instructors. I had teachers that was very hands-on. I had professors that genuinely cared about my well-being. And, you know, I could vent to and talk to. And I even had you as a professor. So, you know, I was very close with a lot of people at Livingstone. It really it's you know, I don't know everybody's name at Livingstone, but they know me. <laughs> so <laughs> I would say that, you know, I'm very appreciative of the opportunity. And, you know, I don't see it as a lot of people like, you know, I went somewhere and I was at a conference and I was like, you know, Livingstone is very lucky to have had you as a student. And I always tell people, you know, no, I'm lucky that, you know, to have Livingstone because Livingstone really developed me, you know, before I didn't really care about, you know, if my hair was cut, you know, how to tie a tie. I didn't really care about that kind of stuff. It didn't phase me, you know, it was just, oh, it, it is what it is. But it's like going to Livingstone, it really matured me and it really, it really perfected my skill because it was nowhere where my skill was like forced and it was watered down to, hey, this is the skill that you need to learn. It was more or less like, hey, what do you want to learn? Like, what's the skill that you want to learn? And that's kind of what I appreciate from Livingstone is that I was allowed to really learn my own skill set and just develop it from there. Cool. So I don't yeah, I don't think if I went to anywhere like, I don't think if I would have went to any other school that I would have been the chef that I am simply because, you know, I wouldn't have been given the chance to expand on my own mindset of what I had in mind. So I'm, like I say, I'm just beyond appreciative. I could go on and on about Livingstone. That's awesome. No, that's a great answer. That's nice to, to hear how much you love Livingstone College there. So I have one kind of random question to ask you um, okay. as before we transition into some of these other ones, because I know you're a big uh, kind of comic book superhero kind of guy. So do you prefer Marvel or DC and who is your favorite character? Um, I am a Marvel fan and 
My favorite person, it varies from time to time. At one person, it, I mean, what time, one time it was um, Frank, I mean, Franklin Reed from the, the Son of the Fantastic Four because he's supposedly the strongest mutant on, in the Marvel world. Like, he can create different dimensions, pocket universes. It just depends. You know, it's really nobody that supposedly can beat him. So I'll say right now it's Wolverine because I just discovered Old Man Logan. And I really wanted to see what Old Man Logan was really about since everybody was talking about the movie was just so different. And I mean, I, you know, I haven't seen it, you know, with Marvel. I, I wish that they would. I wish I'm, I'm kind of glad that X-Men is integrating into the Marvel Universe mm -hmm. because I think they can just do it way better. So maybe we we'll get the 626 universe and maybe we we'll get the ultimate universe. So from what Marvel has produced, we're kind of getting the ultimate universe. So I kind of, either way it goes, I think the X-Men will do good. Man, I tell you what, you were really digging deep into all that stuff now. Because I, I knew you were big on it when I was at Living Soul. We used to chit-chat about it a little bit. And I guess you're digging a little bit deeper. So next uh, next set of questions were just revolves around a, a wide array of, of topics. So here's one. Uh, what would you say is the the worst job you've ever had that revolved around food service? <laughs> um. Ooh, um, let's see. So, gosh, if you feel I'm putting you on the spot, we could we You're could maybe fine. shift it. All right, we're so, good. <laughs> it's a job that I've recently had, um, and it was mainly because I came in under the impression that it was going to be one thing, and it was not that. So, it mainly was with this specific job. So, I will say I had it this year. Not give a time frame. So, um, the jobs basically, it was like, hey, you're gonna come in, you're gonna, you know, you're gonna, we're gonna use your skills, and that's one of my big things. If I'm gonna go, you know, if I'm gonna be a manager at a restaurant, I do not work at corporate restaurants. That's just one of my, I don't do that, you know. Being a culinary chef, most places teach you to be a corporate chef, and I want to be somebody that, hey, let's see what's working for you. You know, I like to really get down and crunch those numbers down, demographics. Hey, well, maybe, you know, steak in this area, eh, nah, I don't think that's going to work. Um, caviar in this area, nah, that ain't going to work. Raw fish in this area, nah, that ain't really going to work. So I think that was really the problem. They wasn't bad people. I think that the exit, you know, I was fired. So, I mean, you know, it was kind of like a hit to my ego. So with it, you know, I was just kind of like, what can I take from this? And I can take it that it by far was not the best experience I had. I think the relationships that I built with the people, those was great. I really enjoyed the relationships I built with them. You know, I, I think, the bridge is burned. I will say that. I would never go back. Like, I would never attempt to help them or anything like that. But, you know, um, it's just like I was, you put me in a position, but it's, I felt like you didn't want to put me in a position because you didn't trust me. So people really don't understand. You know, when people say keeping drama out the kitchen is easier, that's easier said than done because working in the kitchen is just like, it's high volume, you know, where I was at, it was low volume most of the time, but sometimes it would get busy and then it would just be like, nobody kind of knew how to comprehend it. So it's just like, well, now what? Like that was the issue that we just had and I, I just wouldn't recommend it. You know, I, I can always say, if you're gonna hire somebody, regardless of what field it is, and you put them in a position to where they're supposed to be the main people that runs ideas by you. And, you know, and you if you want their artistic skills, let them do it. If you're not, just be honest in the beginning, because it's not going to end where you're going to really make somebody feel bad about their craft. You're going to make somebody really just 
not feel great about what they're doing or confident. And I think that's the most important thing. You know, you get so much more out of confident employees. Like, it's just like, even with me taking your accounting class, for instance, you made me feel confident that I could do it. Even though I was like, ah, uh, numbers ain't really my thing. So, <laughs> so it's just like, you have to really, as a manager, I think a lot of people, they want to be a manager and not a leader. And you retain employees by being a leader and not a manager. Because I'm not gonna, I'm not a manager. I'm a leader anytime I'm somewhere. Like, hey, what can I do? Where can I jump in? What can I do for you? And it's just like, it's it's just too many managers that, you know, they own stuff and they just, hey, I'm I'm a man, I'm the manager. This is what I'm gonna say gonna do. I know I told you you could come up with this concept, this idea, but don't do it. So that's, I would have to say that's why it's the worst job. I've never had a job where I was told, hey, you come in, you create menus, you know, you come up with a special, you, you know, you really, um, I want you to be the front front. I'm at front runner. I want to promote you as a chef. And then it's like, hey, well, let's water down your idea. Let's let's do this. Let's, you know, saying safe with a menu. I'm not going to work nowhere to stay safe with the menu because you get nowhere in a restaurant being safe. So it sounds like it was just a difference of philosophy. That you yeah, were... it was very different of philosophy. And it was, I mean, like I said, it was nothing but respect. But I think what really got mad is what really kind of, deteriorated the entire relationship is that it was like I really was just kind of at the place to where I really and I hate the I mean it's just so hard not putting it like that but it's just like I didn't need it like I, I didn't need it because I technically the next month I made so much more money but you know I try to stay humble with everything that I do um simply because you know I always you know they all, my grandma always told me, you know, the same people that you see going up is, you know, if it ever comes a point where you go down, you're going to see those same people. Yeah. So, uh, I love it. Hey, grandparents, they, they know what's up, man. They have a lot of, a lot of great pieces of advice. Um, so um, jumping in and kind of keeping into the, uh, the aspect of being in the kitchen, have you ever had a situation where you felt that you've had to quote unquote punish uh, a customer? <laughs> um, <laughs> luckily for maturity, when I first started um, in the restaurant industry, it's, it's not my proudest moment. I was I was a very petty chef. I was a very petty manager. Like, hey, okay, so you're causing trouble to my employees. I got you. So it wasn't nothing like I promise it wasn't nothing like putting anything in anybody's food or anything. I might shorten you on some fries. Or stuff like that. You know, I had to kind of grow. I had to really grow out of doing that kind of stuff. I was just like, you know what? It's just I had to start learning the psychology of a customer. You know, when you put five, if you pay five dollars for a four for four, you really expect to have a full batch of fries, a full drink, unlimited sauces, and you know the biggest juiciest burger. You know, you just expect so much. So, you know, I had to really step into the customer role and understand the customer and where they was coming from because, you know, everybody doesn't think the same. And it's just that, I mean, I think that's really the issue when it comes to punishing customers that, you know, you kind of got to just be careful on what you do, especially now seeing stuff um, with people throwing their food down and stuff like that. But, you know, I, I would shorten somebody's food. I mean, I wish, or, or make them wait. And I realized, you know, hey, that's kind of, you don't know. But, you know, customers as well, you know, the customers are not always right. <laughs> you know, and I remember uh, I had a professor who one time told me, sometimes you have to fire the customer. Uh, a customer gets a little out of hand. Sometimes you do have to fire that customer. Um, and he talked about experiences where he made customers wait a little bit longer for their food, or he did the same thing you mentioned, shorten up, uh, the serving size, right? They didn't get as much. Um, and it was like, you know, if they're going to be that kind of customer, I'm going to be this kind of chef and they're going to get a little bit less. Um, I just wanted to, to touch on one question and I don't think we're actually going to get to uh, see some of Jordan's culinary creations tonight, but we'll have to bring you back and maybe you just do a cooking okay. demo uh, on the show and, and do some things for us, man. So, um, you know, cause I've had the chance to see you work uh, 
you know what I mean? I've had a chance to see you work as a student and then on the news doing a, a show. So uh, we'll have to bring you back and you'll have to do a, okay. a cooking show. Um, getting into you as a as a chef, right? Now, now you as a chef, what would you say your specialties are? Um, stir fry. So I would say that's really, that's really kind of what I came, that was like one of the first things I cooked. So Southern foods, like the tricks and trades of Southern foods, my grandma, um, my great, great grandma, actually, she was a cook at heart. Like she, um, she was a baker, but she was a cook. So, um, I could go on and share like my whole family's posts, like what they be posting on a daily basis. My whole family cook. So it's just like my aunt, she has a successful, um, she has a successful um, candied apple cheesecake places. Like she does, like one of my aunts, she does sweet egg rolls. It's, it's just phenomenal to actually see that. Like, wow, we really come from a Kone family. Um, let's see. Out of all my Kone dishes, um, which is my favorite. So I would have to say, that's a hard one. My absolute favorite one would have to be the stir fry. Because it's just like I learned something with stir fry. I learned something new every single time. I'm like, hey, I can add this or take that away. It's, it's just so different. Like I love the Japanese culture when it comes to cooking because they have such a unique, and I call it a magical, like cuisine. I like that. Uh, unique and magical cuisine. That's awesome. And I do like that. Um, so as a, a chef, a lot of people say, uh, and I don't know if you've heard this, they say never trust a skinny chef, right? Because they say skinny chefs don't eat their own things and you are not big by any stretch of the imagination. But I know because having been around you for a while, you like to eat. What is your favorite type of food to eat? Japanese food. So, so you're sticking with Japanese cooking and the Japanese eating. So my grandma, this is actually kind of, sort of how I got to exploring different routes of food. So my grandma was like, I'm not going to buy Chinese food every week. Like, you're going to have to figure something else out. So um, I think this was like 2008, 2009. So YouTube wasn't as big to me. It, it might have been big to other people on YouTube. But, you know, I didn't even have internet access. So I would walk down to Dead Coin with my computer and I just look up Japanese restaurants like, hey, this ain't too hard. Um, so, I mean, little did I know, in the very, very beginning, it was a lot of mess ups. And I actually made caramel by accident one time. And I could never figure out what that was I, I had made with this sugar. I had, you know, like a lot of stuff, my girl was like, you're going to have to make something. Like, I'm not going to spend all this money on food. And, you know, you had this phone bill. You know, you want all this stuff. So I made caramel cornbread by accident one time and you know i could never figure it out and even to this day the same way i made it that day i, I can't make it like that so i don't know what that was about I, I think that was just a one-time thing so japanese food was one of the things that i first perfected because i had to learn how to make it if i wanted it i had to like okay i'm gonna have to make my own stuff for us so that's well, really high that all right, so we we know that's your your favorite. What other types of cuisines do you uh, are you able to to make or like making? What other types of cuisines? So here recently, I've gotten into um, fusions, like fusion cuisines, like a mixed hybrid of like American and well, I did a fusion a couple weeks ago for some odd reason. It just kind of hit me, and I was just so fascinated by it. So I was doing, a, um, I did a crop trap, but instead of having the beef and stuff, I had collard greens in there. I had macaroni and cheese, mashed potatoes, and bits and pieces of chicken. So those, that's like something big I've kind of gotten into, like cuisine. I mean, like fused cuisines. So that was like a fusion of... Latino and um, down South American. Um, I've really gotten into like some more. Hey, I wanted to really start getting into Asian foods here recently. Or something that I've been seeing actually trending is anime foods. 
What what is anime food? So anime foods is basically the foods that they make on animes and cartoons. So a lot of people have been trying to figure out how to make it. So it it really doesn't have a domain of what culture it comes from. Okay. So, so well, now going back to what you just mentioned, uh, my man uh, Jerome Lane for, that I went to high school with, he was like, "Now you're talking." Um, you know, you're, you were talking about the mac and cheese and, and all that. And actually, uh, that's just basically hashtag comfort food, right? And I think right now with with COVID-19, everybody's stuck in the house. Um, yes. that, that's the kind of food we're eating. That's why we have, you know, the COVID-19 pounds everybody's putting on instead of right. uh, going out to eat. But no, no, I like that, Jordan, the, the fusion. So I know you mentioned stir fry um, as, you know, and, and the Japanese cooking. But is there a one particular dish? Uh, and I'll give you an example, right? So whenever my mom comes to town, uh, it's me and my kids and everybody, we're like, oh, you know, can you please make Benin? Uh, you know, she she makes the, the pork and the rice and beans and everything. And that's that's our dish that we love that she makes. Is there one particular signature dish that you would say you have that is, this is the Jordan specialty and it's always on point and everybody's like, hey, Jordan, can you make this for me? So... With it, a lot of people, when they come, um, they really like my seafood, like how I do my seafood, um, like how I bake it. In, um, well, I let it sit in wine. So everybody knows, hey, you're going to have to let me know overnight before you come. So it's a specific brand of wine that I use. And a lot of people like that I let it sit in the wine. And it just becomes, especially where I get my um, salmon from. I get it from an actual person where it's actually fresh. They cut it there, never frozen. So, put, you know, let it sit, season it with my salt, pepper, my other seasons. And then I bake it off for about 15, 20 minutes. And everybody just love how moist it is. Because a lot of people, when they cook their own salmon, they cook it. I mean, it just cooks and it's not moist. It just dries out in the oven. So even if I pan sear, a lot of people really just love um, the way that I do my seafood. Like how I just bake it. It just so, like you, um, like my roommate, Bree, she was playing and she was like, hey, I'm going to try this out with a spoon. And it just fell right through the spoon. So a lot of people love that. Um, another thing that a lot of people inquire me about making, and it's just kind of like, Oh gosh, again. Um, a lot of people love whenever I fry my chicken because the way I fry my chicken, the way I make my macaroni and cheese, a lot of people love it. Um, it's just very unique the way that I make some of my foods. It's it's ways that you wouldn't even think that I make it. So a lot of people love that. And they just you know, I'd be like, hey, you don't want to try nothing else. You know, this week I'm studying. Ah nah, let's just get the chicken and macaroni and cheese. And I'm like Okay. About to say, if it ain't broke, people don't want to try and fix anything right. different, right? If it ain't broken, man, <laughs> I'll tell you what. So you, you did mention that. You're talking about uh, Brianna Taylor, right? Um, yeah. That you guys live together. Um, I know you before we came into production, you were talking about a little venture that she's got going on that you're trying to help her out with. Uh, do you mind just telling uh, the audience a little bit about that? So Brie has her own pastry business, and she anything that you can think of, she can whip it up. And I just, I think that's phenomenal. You know, Brie is a phenomenal pastry. I really love having the pleasure actually watching her go on this journey. Um, she, I, I don't know, words just don't describe it. Like Brie's dessert is just like magical. It's just, um, I love eating it. Like, you know, during COVID, I gained so much weight from eating, hey auntie, I gained so much weight from um, eating her pastries. It's just like her and Faith, their um, their their styles are just unique. You know, a lot of people. Um, I think you know Faith. Yeah, I do know um, Faith. Um, cause she Faith. Would, she would do cooking and all kinds of desserts too, man. Yeah, Faith is fire, man. Yeah. She she makes a lot of good stuff. Actually, so here's another question. Just, um, no, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Jordan. I thought you were done. Go ahead. Oh, no, you're fine. 
Let's see. Is there another food you don't like? Um, what is something I don't like? Because I'll be forced to eat everything. Um, I'm not a huge, huge fan on things. I'm not a big bread fan. So people love the way that I make um, my cornbread and stuff like that. Cause I have a dip again. I have a different approach to it. So it's a Southern, but I have my own swing to it. So I hate making stuff like cornbread. Um, another thing that I just don't eat that a lot of people love to eat is, um, heavy pork dishes like, um, pork chops, pork steaks and stuff like that. But people just love the way I bread it. People love the taste of it. People love the sauces that I make with it. And I'm just like, I just, I hate to eat so much pork. I eat like two or three pieces of it, but I think it's just the grease because you have to use grease to cook it. And then you have to, um, I'm glad you like that recipe. So it's just, I just, I don't know. It's just, it's so much grease in pork and it just, it doesn't do sit right with my body. No, no, I get, I completely understand and get that. Um, just uh, moving on, just a couple other things about you as a uh, a chef. So, when you prepare things, do you make everything from scratch, or do you sometimes sit there and go, "Oh man, I don't have time for this," and get some ready-made product, or is everything from scratch with you? Um, I always tell people this: I make everything from scratch. So that's how I'm able to actually give the prices most of the time that people get. They're like, wow, this is the price. I'm like, yeah, that's the price. Because it's an abundance of, you know, when you make stuff from scratch, it comes out better. You can kind of manipulate it better, um, for instance. Um, let's see something that I made from scratch. Like, my if, I'm, if I just happen to make a cake or something, I make everything from scratch down to the um down to the dye. Like with my red velvet cakes, I make my own dye. I don't use any store brought dyes or anything because it takes away from the um, moistness of the cake. So I use red beets. I mean, it's something that everybody is accustomed to. You know, most people know about it. I had a woman that I worked with. She was like, Have you ever thought about trying red beets if you can't get the cake the way you want to? And I was like, no, I actually never thought of that. And I cooked beets down and that was messy. Red beets is like some of the worst dye you can deal with. It took me, I think two weeks to actually get it up off the stove. Um, <laughs> but I would say that it's, you're always gonna get a better result whenever you have stuff that's actually homemade. Because if when it comes to somebody like me, I'm gonna be able to taste that it's not homemade. I'm always going to be like, hey, you know, this wasn't homemade, you know, because I'm not that kind of chef. So a lot of people, when they try to cook for me, they always try to tell me, hey, you know, I think, um, I think, you know, I don't like cooking for Jordan because he's going to be speaking. I'm like, no, I'm, I'm going to taste it. I may not personally like it. I think one of the biggest examples, especially during the holidays, I think this is very important to mention. I think, it, you know, when it comes to sweet potato pies, those should be completely homemade. That's just my take on it. Simply because, you know, canned foods have a specific taste to it that's mm -hmm. not the best to taste. So it, it's nothing better. I'm not a pie person. But, you know, if I'm, I have to try it. Like I said, a lot of stuff I don't like and I still have to eat it. Um, One of the biggest things that I think are, you know, when you bite into a, fresh piece of pecan pie or pumpkin pie or sweet potato pie, and you can just taste all the ingredients, the cinnamon, the nutmeg, the brown sugar, the sugar itself, the butter. I think that's one of the best thing, the best taste versus I'm tasting a little bit of nutmeg and um, tasting a little bit of nutmeg and I'm tasting the can flavor of the, um, the corn syrup. So my man just <laughs> just asked a question. He was like, "Hey, do you boil ribs uh, before you bake or grill them? What's best?" So, uh, how do you go about making your ribs, Jordan? Everybody wants to know your secret. 
So with ribs, unfortunately, I don't have a cooker. So usually I know that I'm going to make ribs before. That's that's kind of something you have to plan out. So if I don't have enough time to actually um, smoke them or I just don't have anything to smoke them in, I will actually boil them. So, yes, I would recommend boiling them because it reduces the cook time and it actually adds more moist, I mean, more um liquid into it liquid profile into the ribs. So when on the grill, they don't dry out on the grill. Cool. So cool. another cool. method that I would say to use, <laughs> hey, Miss Stevenson. So another thing that I actually recommend actually doing for your ribs is actually baking them in the oven on a low degree for about 30 minutes. Make sure they're in a liquid. They're like, you can do water and you can do, um like different sauces like soy sauce something just to kind of add you can even do barbecue sauce and then throw it on the grill to give it that smoke taste too but it just depends because some people don't like i've learned and it's very interesting working in a real place some people actually like they ribs dry and i i didn't understand that yeah, i was about to say i i prefer uh moist uh you know yeah. what I mean? Almost falling off the bone as opposed to to dry. So last question I have for you here as a chef before we transition and talking a little bit about Thanksgiving and, and different things from there and the holiday coming up. Um, how do you think you would fare in a cooking competition? Or I guess I should ask, have you ever been in a cooking competition? And if you uh, have, how did you do? And if you haven't, how do you think you would do? I have actually. So that's when I mentioned earlier about me knowing Daryl Scholler and Lionel Hughes that's actually how I actually met them. Um, the National Restaurant Association of North Carolina invited two Livingstone, well, actually they invited three of us. So it was me, Hezekiah, and another culinary student named Ashley. So we went to it and the, the basis of it was a professional chef being trained, I meant being under a uh, chef that was still in culinary school. So that was the requirement. So I worked with, um, I can never get his name right, but he's a remarkable chef. He's actually the executive chef of the Ferry Yachts up here. Um, his name is Chef, I, I call him Chef Andreas. So that's how I met him is through that competition. I actually worked with him and you know, I, I, we have a running joke because he handed me a hot plate, and I think that was like my first cooking competition. He handed me this hot plate, and I just willingly grabbed it, and it burned my hand, oh. you know. But he was like, hey, we got to keep moving. We got to keep moving. So mainly, it I really was just in charge of just handing him stuff, but it was a hands-on experience. And then when I did the summer camp at Livingstone, I actually was responsible for have, training a team all week. That was mainly the competition, is I trained them to actually compete against the other teams all week. So they got second place, but like, you know, like I always tell people, I think with competitions, the most important thing is that you, you came out and tried. So that makes you a winner in itself. Because a lot of people don't do competitions. I don't do competitions like that anymore because I just, you know, I don't like being pitted against my brothers and my sisters in the culinary world. I, I call them, you know, anybody follow me on Facebook, you see, I call them my brothers and my sisters. I'm not in competition with anybody. But sometimes just for friendly, I actually was um, going to get into traveling to different places and actually doing competitions against other chefs, seasoned, new, like veteran chefs. So, you know, I had to, now that I'm in a place to where I understand that I'm not always going to win. I'm not the best chef. You know, that's really kind of where, like, hey, I want to have fun with competitions. Yeah, I was about to say, I saw that uh, you did post that on Facebook one time. You said, hey, let's let's try and, and uplift each other uh, in the culinary world. And and that is, is such a good perspective that you uh, that you have. Um, you did touch on something, and I was going to ask you about it a little bit later, but you actually mentioned it here. Um, what was it like working with those kids at the Livingstone College uh, Bear Cub Culinary Camp? It was, it, 
was very eye opening um to see like have a group of people and just see everybody's in a different corner where um I actually have one that she still reaches out to me. She's like, hey, I'm still gonna go to culinary school. I'm still gonna go to culinary school. And it's crazy because her original um degree was I think she wanted to go to school for pharmacy tech. So she was 14 and she already knew what she wanted to do. So she'll shoot me an email here and there and just tell me, hey, I made this and she'll send me food. It's it's just the cutest thing. Um I love you just inspired a future chef. You never know. <laughs> You did, man. So now you're inspiring people. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. So it's I I really um enjoyed it. It was very eye opening to actually be able to show these people. Like I think it's always interesting, even with my job now, being able to really just kind of take my skills and kind of just show people what I do and what I'm about. Because a lot of chefs when they teach you that they water it down. And I'm, I'm just blessed and thankful that I didn't have that experience when I was in culinary school. I had people that were just raw and were just like, hey, we're gonna show you, let me show you how I do this. Let me show you how this is done in the industry, but I'm gonna show you like how this is done. And a lot of, you can't get that from a lot of chefs. I've even worked with some chefs that I'm gonna make the sauce, I'm gonna make the soups, I'm gonna make this because I don't want nobody to have my recipes. But, you know, I think we're just at a time and a place to where it's like, hey, OK, I can just get on Google and see what you're doing. Like, let me you know, if you're going to act like that, I'm just going to get um, on Google. Um, so with rice, I don't cook my rice with just salt and pepper. I add basil to it. I add um, well, the salt that I add actually manipulates the flavor to make it more herby is I add Himalayan salt to my rice. So I don't use kosher salt, I don't use um, the other salt. I just really, I use Himalayan salt for a lot of my stuff because it really curves the flavor of it. So that's kind of my specialty rice. Like anytime I make it, it's always have like some different seasons in it. I was about to say, I hope you are talking Himalayan rice because you just mentioned that there'll probably be 20 people running out and getting Himalayan salt to put in their rice tomorrow. So I hope you own a little stock in it, man. Let's get the, those stocks going up. All right, I want to go ahead and start transitioning a little bit. Talk to you about the upcoming Thanksgiving holiday season. Um, so we have just a uh, relaxed conversation about it. And I know you're a chef, but one of the things that uh, I wanted to ask you, what are some must haves at a Thanksgiving dinner? What are things that just have to be at Thanksgiving dinner? I think hmm, with with that, let's see. So I go into it for me. I, I have to have turkey. I have to have macaroni and cheese. Um, I have to have at least, you know, collard greens. I don't eat it, like, per se. I'm not a big collard green fan. But it's just like, hey, okay, you kind of got to have collard greens for Thanksgiving. You got to have corn. You gotta have all these sides, and you gotta have sweet potato pie, and you gotta have like, with the mushroom. I mean, not with the mushrooms, but with the marshmallows. You gotta have that. Again, something I don't eat, but you gotta have it. So it's it's funny you mentioned the the gotta has. I remember the the first time uh, different individuals coming over to my family's uh, Thanksgiving. Uh, and we don't necessarily do things traditional, uh, being uh, Puerto Rican, being Puerto Rican. Uh, and I remember that the focus was not turkey, right? For us, it was Benin, which is pork. Um, and, and it was like, hey, are you guys going to have turkey? And we had turkey, but it was not as big as the, the pork roast. So for, for me, even if I'm going to somebody who's of a different culture, I'm looking for that, that Benin, right? I'm looking for that, that pork. Oh, Kimberly. Hey, how's it going? It's so hey. good. Hope you're doing good. Got a lot of little bit of Livingstone love. I saw Vincia, uh, Mrs. Miller was in here as well. Um, oh, my man, Lou. He said, stuff. "You gotta have stuff and you gotta have stuff." So let me ask you. Um, some people refer to anything that's on a, a side as as stuffing. Now, my understanding is, if it actually is inside the turkey and pulled out, that is stuffing. If it's on the side, cooked on the side, it's dressing. Is that correct? Yes. Um, 
stuffing. I mean, it's it's different very vari- I meant variations of stuffing. So I prefer my stuffing on the side. So it's, it just really depends on, like I said, everybody makes it. Everybody has different needs, especially with all the different, um, all the different, what's the word I'm looking for? Like all the different dietary needs nowadays that people have. Like some people are just pescatarian. Some people are like, they're um, vegan. So I actually have a vegan friend and I actually haven't had the chance to ask her. I'm pretty sure she's watching. I'm, um, so I'm going to text her and be like, hey, so what do you eat for Thanksgiving? So my mom said arroz con gandules or corn. And I have to put this one up because I, I think this is this, this is great. <laughs> so it talks about the, the Thanksgiving food poll. They had Brussels sprouts over collards. Who was polled? <laughs> um, I'm actually going to go on a limb and say this. Hopefully you guys won't get mad at me. I'm not a big fan of either. Right. So I don't really like Brussels sprouts and I really don't like collards. So for me, those are no goes for my Thanksgiving meals. Um, You know, for me, I'm thinking if I'm going to go traditional, uh, we're going to go ahead and and talk about the turkey. Uh, We are going to talk about stuffing or dressing. Um, This is one that uh, lately I I just feel I I have to have. And it is the um, green bean casserole and any other time of year, I'm not a big fan of green beans, but I can definitely get down uh, with the green bean casserole. Uh, here's some other ones that are coming. This is great. So dressing, right? Yeah. We got dressing. And sage is a must. So that's another one. Didn't even think about it. Um, and my man, uh, Luis Rivera, he put I put ground beef and butter in mine. Grandmother's recipe. That's, that's what's up. So uh, here we have another my wife, Kathy, she puts, hey, green bean casserole, uh, it's there. <laughs> and she's also talking about the story where she's like, where's the turkey? Because um, <laughs> I remember the first time I took her to my family's house in Myrtle Beach. Uh, and that was the first thing she said. She was like, where is the turkey? And I was like, oh, yeah, we got turkey somewhere. But, you know, for me, it was the uh, the penne. So then we were just talking about the savory part, right? We we're just talking about savory part. Are there certain things that are a must from the dessert side. Uh, I know you mentioned, uh, what was it? Was it um, pumpkin pie with the marshmallows? You said, mm-hmm. was it, is there anything else you feel that's a must when it comes to desserts at Thanksgiving? Um, the magical thing about Thanksgiving is that Thanksgiving is very close to Christmas. So that means the menus are somewhat designed the same. So for both of those holidays, I would say that, you know, my favorite thing is red velvet cake. Okay. Red velvet cake is like a holiday staple for Thanksgiving. Um, I don't eat it, but pumpkin pie, um, sweet potato pie, like maybe a cob- a peach cobbler. Like those are just must for Thanksgiving. Cool. And, and I do have a question for you revolving your red velvet. Um, gosh, and... I remember you made a red velvet cupcake one time. Um, and what did you put in it? Because it was it was a different taste. It was really good. But you said you were experimenting. And I don't know if you remember what you were experimenting. I do. Um, I, what was it you did with that red velvet cupcake, man? So um, with my cooking, I do a lot of cooking with like different kind of liquors, different kind of alcohols, different kind of wines. So I do remember that. That was the um, – actually – Miss Harrington actually used it. We actually used that recipe for the brownie. So what that was, was it was a red wine, like a red wine cupcake. So it actually had a wine in there. In there. It was good, man. It was good. And actually, the thing I liked the most about it was the, uh, the icing on top. It was good, but not too sweet, not too strong. It wasn't too overpowering. Um so here we have a couple other people throwing some things out. So the pumpkin pie, sweet potato pie uh, is, is a big one that that comes up. Uh, my mom said beets with a question mark um, because that's what you said you use to yeah. make your pie, correct? Yeah. So, and uh, we have another chef here on the line. Uh, so Napoleon's one year with an eggnog pastry cream filling. Actually, that sounds pretty good. Uh, that sounds good. 
Yeah, that does. Lou, anytime you want to come down to St. Augustine and hook a brother up, you are more than welcome. Let me know. Same thing with you, Jordan. Um, so oh, man, I love him. He? He's up in New York. Uh, Louis, uh, he read out. Right. We went to high school together. Um, you know, we, we share the last name. We're not actually brothers, but we are brothers, if you know what I mean. So I understand um, it 100%. <laughs> so, yeah, um, you know, he's, he's my man. I love this. We have Jordan's Red Velvet Brownies for the win. So obviously that, that's popular uh, from that standpoint as a, at a dessert. And I do have one other question okay. as far as when we're getting to Thanksgiving, because Thanksgiving is synonymous with family drama sometimes. So should the family drama be served before or after the dessert, Jordan? Um, well, <laughs> in, in my experience, is. I mean, you know, <laughs> it's already blew over before you can even cut the turkey. So <laughs> that's my personal experience. Um, it's, it's very funny you mentioned it because I had just been talking to somebody <laughs> about that situation. I was like, you know, I was like, dang, the holidays I always bring this. But I made a joke about it. I was like, but you know what? At least during Thanksgiving, I see who I'm in good with and I see who I'm falling out with. So that way I know how to prepare myself for Christmas in my Christmas list. So Thanksgiving is like my determinant for who gets a Christmas gift from me. <laughs> that, that is hilarious that that is uh, your gauge. And, and, and the, you know, the, the reason why I asked is because everybody always seems to talk about the family member who didn't show up. And this year is going to be a little different, right? COVID-19, there might be a lot of people not showing yes. up. So there may be a lot of people getting talked about when you only have a small pocket of, uh, of people. One other I'm thing, usually, like, I'm, oh, usually no, that, no. I'm usually that family member that just doesn't show up. Usually, you know, this is the first year I'm actually not working during Thanksgiving. So I'm that family member that be like, where is he at? Like, oh, he's at work. So he didn't attempt to take off. No, I didn't. <laughs> So, you know, um, and it's funny you mentioned that. That's something a lot of people don't pay attention to with the food industry is, especially around holidays now, you know, I'm going to say we, even though it's been a long time since I've actually been working in the industry, but while we're working hard, everybody else is playing. And a lot of people get this great food when they're out and they forget. It's people like you and my man, Barbecue Lou out there that are actually making these dishes and, and people getting a chance to enjoy. So thank you so much for all that you guys do to allow other people to enjoy their holiday um, at such an elevated level. And there's one other thing I wanted to touch on before we kind of transition to get your, your final thoughts okay. uh, on tonight. <clears throat> Do you have any suggestions for people who are maybe trying to eat healthy during this Thanksgiving holiday? Cause we talked about, you know, people putting on weight during COVID. I know I have, I've eaten more ice cream and all other kinds of stuff. Um, do you have any suggestions? And, there, and the reason why I ask you this is you mentioned a lot of good stuff and a lot of that stuff I know is probably not on the Weight Watchers plan, right? You mentioned that macaroni and cheese you make and Jordan just knowing and eating some of the food that you've made is so good. I know you're you're not worried about counting the calories, but do you have any suggestions for anybody who might be looking at counting calories? With that, I would say personally um, that the best course of action with Thanksgiving, and I think a lot of people ignore this, is it's, it's the portion that you eat. You know, I can eat, I can sit here and I can eat a low, I can eat a sugar-free, low-carb, low-diet piece of chocolate cake, and the issue is going to be is I didn't eat just one slice. I ate the whole pie. I ate the whole cake, so that's really the issue. So it's all about the portion. So, you know, get more green beans than macaroni and cheese. And more meat, like, you know, we all know that stuff like meats, like porks and stuff like that is, you know, they're not the healthiest for our bodies. So it's, it's all about the portion, how you do it. Like, get full off the green beans before you get full off the macaroni and cheese. Like, instead of having a glop of macaroni and cheese, like, get more vegetables on your plate. Like Miss Stevenson was saying, if somebody has Brussels sprouts, then get the Brussels sprouts and the green beans instead of the instead of the uh, big like you know grandma gave you the the leg and the thigh and the breast of a turkey and now you sit there and ate all that like it just it's just about portion to me I think that's the most important thing I always tell people like when I started losing weight because last year I was a little heavy 
Um, but I had a great professor at Livingstone, Professor Facule. You know, I was going, it's funny, we was in Baltimore and I was going up the stairs and it was around this time last year, I was going up the stairs and I was like, like just trying to catch my breath. He's like, hey, when you get back to North Carolina, have you thought about working out? I was like, I have a gym membership. I just haven't been. I pay for it. I just don't go. He's like, hey, you know, if you need somebody to go to the gym with you, just let me know. So within two months, simply by me working out, and it wasn't even a hard work. Well, to me, it was a hard workout at the very beginning because I wasn't used to it. But um, Focule had me really kind of just – Cutting back on my portion, I'm like, that's not going to help if I'm not working out every day. I got to be in the gym every day, five hours a day. But I really started, like, losing a lot of weight. Like, the weight just started falling off of me. So I went from 239 to about – I'm at 198 right now. So I haven't gained that weight back. It's all about portion and control. So when I'm hungry, I try to keep stuff like – I try to keep more vegetables. Like I've really gotten into bacon, like squash, zucchini, and tomatoes. Kind of started just eating more vegetables and stuff like that. So that's that's my best advice for Thanksgiving. It's just about portion control. I, I you know, I appreciate that. I like uh, also what uh, Kimberly had said. She said she's cutting back now so she can indulge a little bit at Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. And you mentioned, you know, uh, with the squash and the zucchini. I recently tried uh, what is it? Uh, the squash noodles um, for pasta. And actually that's really good and a lot better for you. Um, so, and it's funny cause you, I remember the first time I met uh, Focule, I actually called him uh, Hocule because dude is in some serious shape, man. He is no joke, man. Yeah. He, he's serious about his uh, taking care of his body, paying attention to what goes into his body. Um, you know, he did say that he cheated every now and then, but you know, it's, it becomes a lifestyle. So I was just curious your thoughts on, and trying to be better during the, the holiday season. And he's also, a lot of people don't know this, he's a phenomenal chef. Like, phenomenal. Really? Um, Did I know that, man? I should have invited him to pop on here <laughs> real quick with you, too. Did I've learned that? some, I've actually, um, in this whole year, I think from learning from different people, I've actually learned the most from him. He taught me how to sous vide, sous vide um, different stuff. He taught me how to um, cook with wood chips something. I'm not really a big grilling person. So he taught me how to smoke. Like I was like, how you do that without a smoker, man? He was like, hey, I'm going to show you how to do it. So Fagale has really been like a pivotal person in developing the menu for this year. And, you know, I hope in the future to actually work with Fagale on some stuff, especially the project that I've been working on right now. That is awesome, man. I'm glad to hear that. And as we get to the end, we're about to wrap up. Here's your chance. Any final thoughts that you want to just leave with us, Jordan? Okay, so um, I wanted to wait because, you know, I think highly of you and I, I really have been watching your show and I think it's phenomenal. So I was like, what better place to actually announce it? So I am actually working on my channel now. So we're trying, me and the guy on Edge Media, I mean, on Edge Media Films, we're working on really developing my cook show. So it's going to be called On Edge Cooking with Chef Jordan Walker. So each season is going to be themed around something else. So I got something for my anime fans. I I think y'all are really going to love it. The first season is kind of just going to be an introduction to my cooking, my archery. So that way, once we get into the other seasons, we can kind of get into it. But I have some amazing projects coming in next year, you know, and I really want to be able to use some of these products to not only give back to the community, but to give back to Livingstone College. And it just, it's been so amazing to AC, you know, especially with, since we got Miss Harrington here, you know, Miss Harrington, once I was on TV, Miss Harrington really pushed me. And I really appreciate you for that. She really pushed like everything. Livingstone has just been behind me 100%. I'm just, I'm just very appreciative of Livingstone. And, you know, I hope, and pray that, you know, once this channel goes up and the first video come out, which hopefully the presentation, the um, preview for the channel will actually come out around mm, probably about January. And then we start rolling out episodes about mid-March. So I'm very excited about that. And I mean, I want to bring you on to the show. So me and my film crew 
are possibly gonna have to come to Florida, Dr. Revere. Hey man, come on down to St. Augustine, okay. brother. We'd love to have you down here. Great culinary scene down here. We got a lot of great chefs. Um, man, I, I tell you what, Jordan, th this means a lot to me that you actually made this announcement on on Roll the Dice with Dave. I'm a big fan of yours. I think uh, from when we first met, uh, I told you, hey, man, you're destined for big things. Okay. And I'm just glad that you're allowing me to have a front row seat to the show, man, because uh, you're, you're just going to do amazing things. So I know that no matter what, you definitely going to have somebody tuning in every week because I'm looking forward to uh, checking out your show, learning a little bit from you. So now we're going to switch roles. You're going to become my teacher and I'll get to learn something from you. So thank, thank you so much for that. Um, Jordan, I just want to thank you so much for being on the show tonight. Okay. I really appreciate it. Um, everybody, please make sure that you are uh, following Chef Jordan Walker. He's always putting little things out there uh, for you guys to check out. Definitely somebody you're going to want to follow because he is going to accomplish great things. So, oh, I tell you what. I miss you guys too. Much love to you guys always. Uh, thank you so much for that shout out. And as we get ready to wrap things up, going to go ahead and jump into this. Next week, uh, we have going into Thanksgiving week, uh, the family that we get to choose. I'm actually going to be doing a show with some individuals I met through my journey in life um, where we're going to talk about We Are Family. I was part of a program at East Carolina University before I left, and I met some great individuals and they are the family that I've chosen. Uh, they are the individuals that I am constantly in contact with, and they are helping me to try to be the best person I can be. And I'm always bouncing ideas off of them. So next week, we're just going to talk about some of the things that they're doing and how we're, we're still managing to get through this coronavirus situation and what we have to look forward to to the holidays. Uh, also, if you want to reach out and connect, please feel free to do so. Uh, you can reach me on Facebook and Twitter, also available on Instagram. Uh, Roll the Dice with Dave uh, is the main uh, Facebook fan page. You can also track me down at David Rivera Jr. I'm also at El Leon, El Leon de Flagler on Twitter and on Instagram, Rivera D underscore the Flagler Prof. Um, and you can also, if you want to, reach out to me on LinkedIn. Jordan, once again, thank you so much for being on the show. Oh. I really appreciate it. Uh, looking forward to having you again where next time you're doing a cooking demo. Oh, uh -huh. yeah, definitely. We'll definitely start talking about it now. That sounds like a plan. Everybody, I hope you have a great night. And those of you that are tuned in, thank you so much. Everybody, enjoy your holiday. Be happy, healthy, and safe. All righty.